Welcome back to PNC's Week in Review. In a new development, Guam received its first and what is expected to be a series of shipments of cattle from Saipan on Monday. Saipan has been unable to ship cattle to Guam because of some unnecessarily restrictive laws that were recently revised through a bill introduced by Speaker Judy Wan Pat. PNC's Clint Rogel has more. Saipan cattle rancher Ernie Torres confirms that 10 head of cattle from Saipan arrived on Guam this morning. Nine of them will be bulls, male, and this one female, young heifer. And then uh, we're looking at shipping uh, two more containers immediately after that. The second uh, shipment will be uh, adult female, and uh, the third shipment would be uh, probably uh, calves right around the 12 to 12 to 18 month age age group. Uh, and we'll be shipping them in 20 in a modified uh, 20 foot uh, shipping container. All three shipments combined will bring a total of 30 to 40 head of new cattle to Guam. And this new influx of cattle is sorely needed because Guam's cattle has been inbreeding for years and new genes are needed to create more diversity in its gene pool. In the 80s and 90s, the Saipan government brought in some Santa Gertrudis cattle from the U.S. mainland. And since then, Torres has crossbred in some other cattle genes. 2008, I got certified in Texas uh, to do artificial insemination. And uh, I started uh, the latter part of 2008 inseminating my cattle. And because we are out here in the, the hot and humid weather, out here in the Marianas, the best cattle that, that, that should thrive out here are, are, are cattle that are influenced with the Brahman, Brahman genetics, the Brahma cattle. Torres says that most of the semen he uses is red brangus, which is a cross between Angus cow and Brahmin bull. But he also uses black brangus, Santa Gertrudis, Beefmaster, and others, or about eight or nine different types of bulls. Several of the bulls that are that are that will be coming into Guam are right around between three and a half, four and a half years old. So they're, they're huge bulls, and they've proven themselves. They've actually bred uh, some most of our cows here, and uh, the calves really look good. He says the influx of these new, healthier bulls should make for better, more meatier cattle on Guam. In the CNMI, cattle are a lot bigger than, than cattle on Guam because Guam has been in, inbreeding cattle for the longest time. And that is because there's been no influx of no, uh, uh, or there's been no influx or import of new genetics, new bulls. Ernie Torres says they had to get through a lot of red tape just to begin shipping these cattle to Guam. Six months ago, Guam laws were changed through a bill introduced by Speaker Judy Wanpat making things easier. But even then, there were still some things that the Department of Agriculture had yet to iron out. There's a requirement that, uh, that the animals be quarantined for 30 days, and the government still has no quarantine facility, so we had to build one at Chris's place, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Chris Torres is placed in, in Manila by the golf course, and that's the only way that, that it was possible for us to bring in these animals. After the quarantine, Chris Torres will use the cattle on his ranch. It will be a lot easier to move animals between the cinema and Guam if we have a slaughterhouse, because if we have a slaughterhouse, we can just pick up the animal from the existing fence where, where it's at, at point of origin, and bring it straight down to the slaughterhouse in Guam, and, and uh, that'll be it. Slaughter the animal and process it. But right now, for breeding purposes, we've got a bring him in, clean him up, uh, deworm him, and uh, test the blood for tuberculosis, brucellosis, quarantine him, and it's a, it's a big hassle. But once we have a slaughterhouse down there, I, I, I think that it will be something that's feasible that will actually serve the local community. Another thing that Guam needs is a slaughterhouse. Torres says that Guam was supposed to build a multi-million dollar slaughterhouse years ago, but for some reason, the deal fell through. Torres, who actually grew up on Guam before moving to Saipan, says that Guam was supposed to build a multi-million dollar slaughterhouse years ago, but for some reason the deal fell through. He says Saipan has a slaughterhouse that only costs somewhere between five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars to build. That's it for your Week in Review. Tune in tomorrow night for your News Now on ABC7. For all the latest updates, visit our website, PacificNewsCenter.com. I'm Byron Sun. Thanks for watching.